I'd like to turn to, now to uh, someone right here in Abu Dhabi, and that's Joe Jaffe, a uh, uh, longtime observer of uh, American policy and uh, the author of a book called The Myth of the American Decline. I wonder if uh, that uh, is true still, the myth of the American decline, or has it been disproven? Is the American, is American decline? No, it isn't, but that's not the issue. <laughs> I was going to actually follow on right here. I mean, the question was, what's going to happen next two years? And in a moment like that, I take refuge with the greatest American baseball players of all time, Yogi Berra, who said, I never make predictions, especially not about the future. And the reason we are confused, so often confused about American foreign policy, is that it keeps going through cycles. Just in the 21st century, 20 years ago, we've gone to three or four. You get George W., who lives in a unipolar world, no checks and balances, so Gulliver unbound throws his weight around. He is then followed by the retrenchment by, and this may surprise you, retrenchment by both Obama and Trump. Now, why do I say that? Um, both of them pulled troops from Europe. Both badmouthed the Atlantic Alliance, one calling it obsolete, the other one um, complained about the Europeans being free riders, uh, which aggravated him. Um, three, both Obama and Trump veered toward protectionism. We just heard some of this. And fourth, both of them, both of these strange mix of characters flirt with the bad guys in order to reduce the cost of American, America's global role. So Obama hopes to rope in uh, uh, Iran, cold shoulders Israel, and Saudi Arabia. And Trump, as you know, plays footsie with Putin and Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong so here's the cycle, the reassertion of American power under Bush is followed by retrenchment, softly under Obama, brutally under the demolition man Trump. Uh, and of course, these shifts don't, don't work. Bush dreamed of democracy promotion, uh, no more war, uh, of nation building, well, that receded into dreamland. And uh, under Obama, Iran keeps expanding from Iraq to the Mediterranean, working dilig and then working diligently on the bomb. Um, to all, <clears throat> Putin grabs Crimea and Ukraine southeast. So now the prize question, what about Obama? Uh, and I told you, American foreign policy is confusing. Where is he on, this, on the cycle of reassertion and retraction? Uh, it, in honor, so the French among you will know Pierre Hasner, one of the most brilliant guys in the business, Paris, who perfected the philosophy of the either on the one hand, on the other hand. And in his honor, I will imitate him, his great style. So on the one hand, Biden immediately stops and reverses the pullout from Europe. Instead of bad-mouthing NATO like Obama and Trump, he mends fences. Next point, on the other hand, he picks up on Obama's Iran approach, trying desperately to revive the deal. On the one hand, Biden tries to tighten the bomb with Japan, South Korea, which Trump neglected, also tightening the alliance with, with Australia. Um, on the other hand, Biden poo-poos Trump's most significant foreign policy achievement, the Abraham Accords. If you notice at the uh, contemporary verbiage that comes out of the administration, the word Abraham Accord doesn't appear. Um, toward China, we heard of it, something was Stu, Biden is far tougher than were Obama and Trump, but on the other hand, this time, the 
pivot to Asia, which never took place strategically, is for real. On the other hand, Biden rules out a clear commitment to Taiwan. The key word is ambiguity. On the one hand, Biden does cozy up to Europe. On the other, if you've heard this, the Inflation Reduction Act is protectionism with another name. The gist is that non-US companies will not profit from the lavish subsidies, which will put them at a competitive disadvantage. Finally, on Ukraine, which you're most curious about, on the one hand, Ukraine, remember that, would be a goner by now if it hadn't been for the immediate American intervention with money and arms. Yeah, 50-some billion by now. And that made the Europeans, very reluctant Europeans, come along, even the French and the, and the Germans. Um, why? Because once the US assumes leadership and, and extends protection, it's easier for smaller power to take the risk. On the other hand, last November has seen US feelers to the Kremlin when Biden suddenly threw up the term compromise. And a few days ago, when Macron was in, the, in Washington, Biden said, I'll quote, I'm prepared to speak with Mr. Putin if, in fact, there's an interest in him deciding that he is looking for a way to end the war, unquote. So the gist of these oblique offices is, as the Russians are trying to annihilate Ukrainian cities and civilians, while preparing, by the way, for a new offensive, such hints are the wrong moves at the wrong time. And I'm glad what Stu Eisenstadt just, just reported. The old Congress will probably put through a bill for 37 billion in aid. So who is Joe Biden, given his predecessors? Is he a retractionist like Obama and Trump? Uh, an American firster like, like Trump, who wanted to make America great again by cutting costs and, cutting costs and commitment? Remember the similarity. It was Trump who engineered the pullout from Afghanistan, which Biden executed. Um, it's another similarity between the far right and the moderate left is that both Trump and Biden are twins when it comes to American welfare and workers. These come first. So on this level, bitter ideological enemies like Democrats and Republicans are two pieces in a pod, left and right together. It will further be weaken the free trade system that the United States built and maintained after the war, after World War II. Um, ha -ha. Almost done. Um, so, my beloved Piaz now, who would, would not be off the mark with these dialectics, one hand, other hand. American grand strategy has never followed a straight line. The cycles of reassertion and retrenchment are as American as apple pie. Entanglement starts right away in the revolution with the French alliance. Once that was over, America retracts into isolationism. It had much more interesting things to do, namely to conquer the whole continent uh, without entangling with great powers. So this, because of these gyrations, only fools would make predictions. Um, plus, a Western alliance as a whole, that may be tiring, maybe, maybe, of, of the war. Um, so, but the not, good thing about Biden, I'll conclude with that, though he is an ideologue on domestic politics, he does understand how the world um, has changed from unipolarity under Bush to this two and a half power world today, America, Russia, China. It is a fierce competition with power, both military and economic, as hardest currencies. 
Biden's mentor, Obama, didn't quite fathom these arising dynamics. So, last point. On balance, I think Biden has performed better than all of his three predecessors. Now, the new name of the game is a balance of power restored, the containment of the revisionist trio, China, Russia, and Iran. Uh, not Gulliver Unbound, as I said before, but Gulliver in the service of world order. In this new epoch, we are talking about a long haul, longer than the next two years, obviously. But my um, best news, I'll conclude with those, because of what I just said, we'll have lots to talk about over the next five of these conferences. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joe, and I've, I'm not sure that... Um, How do we... Yeah. I'm not sure President Biden would, uh, would like being uh, known as a pea in the pod with Donald Trump, but uh, you hey, never know. Hey, that's journalistic life. <laughs> right. Uh, I like it.